Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Millennium TV News. This is Isha Jahan with the top stories. US and Israel leaders to hold first post Iran deal meeting. South China Sea US Defense Chief Ash Carter weds into Rome. Leaks came US high school football player dies. Brazil dam burst engulfs home in Minas Gerais. Sinai plane crash, Russia suspends Egypt flights. Viewers, now the details. The washing talks comes and weeks of unrest between Israel and the Palestinians. Six Israelis were wounded in knife attacks by Palestinians on Sunday. A Palestinian who drew a knife on Israeli guards was shot dead on Monday. Mr. Netanyahu is seeking a boost in annual U.S. military aid for Israel. The talks are expected to pave the way towards an increase from $3.1 billion a year to $5 billion, media reports say. Relations between Mr. Netanyahu and Mr. Obama were strength over July's nuclear deal with Iran, which was bitterly opposed by Israel. In the last week, the U.S. has also expressed its surprise at Mr. Netanyahu's choice of a new spokesman, Ran Baratz, who made controversial comments about administration officials. Mr. Baratz accused Mr. Obama of anti-Semitism and described U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry as having a mental age of no more than 12. A U.S. State Department spokesman said the posts were troubling and offensive. Mr. Baratz will no longer be a part of Israel's delegation. At a cabinet meeting on Sunday, Mr. Netanyahu said the focus of the talks would be on possible progress with the Palestinians, or at least stabilizing the situation with them, and of course strengthening the security of the State of Israel. On Monday morning, a Palestinian woman was shot dead when she ignored warnings to stop after approaching security guards with a knife at a crossroad in the West Bank, Israeli officials said. In the West Bank city of Nablus on Sunday, four Israelis were struck by a car driven by a Palestinian man who was then killed by security forces. A Palestinian woman stabbed by a security guard close to a West Bank settlement south of Jerusalem before being shot by the victim. She remained in a serious condition in hospital. And near the West Bank village of Nabi Elias, an Israeli man was stabbed by two people who then fled. The upsurge in violence began in September when tensions at a flashpoint holy site in East Jerusalem, revered by Jews and Muslims, boiled over amid rumors Israel planned to relax long standing rules to strengthen Jewish rights on the complex. Israel has repeatedly denied such claims. He called his visit in the USS Theodore Roosevelt a symbol of America's stabilizing presence in the region. Mr. Carter said any concern over his visit was due to tension in this part of the world, blaming China for most of the activity over the last year. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesman warned against waving the banner of freedom of navigation to push forward the militarization of the South China Sea and even provoked and endangered other countries' sovereignty and security interests. In this aspect, we hope the relevant actions and intentions of the U.S. can be made open and above board. She said before Mr. Carter's visit, the U.S. Defense Secretary flew on Thursday with his Malaysian counterpart to the Theodore Roosevelt, which was sailing some 70 miles northwest of Borneo. His visit comes a week after a U.S. Navy destroyer sailed inside the 12 nautical mile radius that China claims at its territorial waters around one of its recently reclaimed islands. Countries in and around the South China Sea have wrangled over centuries over control of the ocean areas and its largely uninhabited islands. But tensions have increased in recent years as China has backed out its expansive claims with island building and navy patrols. The U.S. alleges China has reclaimed almost 3,000 acres of land in the past 18 months and fears of the dispute could turn into one with a global consequences. The family of Luke Skame confirmed on Wednesday he was taken off life support at a hospital in Denver after being declared brain dead. The principal of Luke's school did not know why the football player had collapsed during the game. Game officials did not see him sustain neck or head injuries while playing. His teammates are likely to still play in a game on Saturday, something those who knew Luke say he would have wanted. Luke gave all his on the field, said Carrie Musselman of the Kansas State High School Activities Association. 
He lived his life with a passion, and that's what we want them to do. Luke's death, if ruled to be football-related, would be the third of its kind in Kansas in 17 years. Any death is wanted too many. We are just hurt sick and time a youngster prematurely passes because of whatever reason, said Mr. Musselman. There have been 11 high school of football deaths in the U.S. since July. According to the National Center for Catastrophic Sport Injury Research, seven of which were directly related to football trauma. Officials in southeastern Minas Gerais state say one person is confirmed dead, but there are reports that up to 16 have died and others are missing. Rivers of thick red mud surge down the valleys of the hilly area outside the old colonial city of Mariana. It engulfed cars and lorries and destroyed homes. Authorities in Mariana say the dam had ruptured on Thursday afternoon and sent torrents of mud and debris into the small town of Bento Rodriguez, about 7 km away. The rescue operation has been hampered by fears of landslides, but helicopters have taken several stranded people to safety, she adds. Authorities have warned that the water mixed with residue from mining operations could be toxic. A spokesman for the Samarco Mining Company, which owns the dam, said the cause of the breach was not yet known. President Vladimir Putin made the announcement after UK investigators said they believed a bomb was put in the plane's hold prior to takeoff, killing all 224 people on board. The UK has suspended flights to Sharm al-Sheikh and is bringing Britons home. Militants linked to the Islamic State group say they have drowned the plane. The Metrojet Airbus A321 was flying from Sharm al-Sheikh to St. Petersburg when it came down in Sinai on Saturday. Most of the victims were Russian. Militants from the Sinai province group linked to IS have not said how they destroyed the plane. IS has called for a war against both Russia and the U.S. over their airstrikes in Syria. The BBC understands that UK officials received intelligence based on intercepted communications between militants in the Sinai Peninsula, indicating an explosive device may have been put inside or top of the luggage just before the plane took off. Its involvement in the campaign will shorten the time it takes for French jets to carry out air strikes. France has been targeting IS in Iraq as part of the US-led coalition since September 2014. In September this year, French forces began air strikes in Syria. The Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier has already been deployed against IS. The ship France's only such vessel was used as a base for French jets in the Gulf from February to April. French is currently using six Mirage jets stationed in Jordan and six Rafale jets in the United Arab Emirates to target IS. The aircraft carrier can hold up to 40 aircraft and support 100 flights a day. The girl is being treated at the city's teaching hospital and is able to recognize relatives. Journalist Philip Mabir from Juba's iRadio reports at least 36 people died after the plane crashed on takeoff near the Juba airport. The cause of the crash remains unclear, but the manufacturer say the cargo plane was not airworthy. The UN peacekeeping mission in South Sudan has sent divers to search the nearby White Nile for bodies and also for the black box recorders. The Antonov AN-12 plane operated by local company Allied Services Limited was heading to Paloch, Upper Nile State and came down 800 meters from the runway. It crashed into a framing community in an island on the White Nile, but it is not clear how many of the victims and survivors were passengers and how many were on the ground. It is not clear if the 14-month-year-old is the only survivor. She was one of the two people taken alive from the wreckage on Wednesday, and the other is reported to have died later. However, Philip Mabier said another person who survived the crash was also being treated in hospital. The cargo plane was not authorized to take passengers. Stephen Warikosi, the head of South Sudan Civil Aviation Board. They were all from South Sudan. It is not clear what caused the crash, but Ukraine-based Antonov said the plane had not been airworthy. Five of the six crew members were American, while the sixth was Russian. They were all killed. An alliance of regional parties took 178 seats out of 243. The BGP won 58. Mr. Modi won a convincing victory in last year's national elections, but this poll was seen as a referendum on his economic program. Defeat is a major setback for the Prime Minister. 
However, a spokesman for the Hindu-led National BGP rejected suggestions. The result was a personal blow for Mr. Modi, saying the party managed a creditable performance. The Prime Minister had now been hoping a victory in Bihar would boost his party's strength in India's upper house of parliament, which is made up of representatives of state legislatures and where he lacks a majority. With a population of 100 million, Bihar is one of India's largest states and one of the poorest. Viewers will take a short break. Kunduz bombing U.S. planes fired on MSF hospital staff. India's Arunthati Roy returns national award over horrific murders. Bangladesh boy killing six sentenced to death. Myanmar election opposition confident of victory. Cristiano Ronaldo, I'm the best player in the world. Viewers, let's move to the next news. In a report, MSF said there were no weapons or fightings inside the compound in Kunduz before the bombing started. The U.S. initially said its forces had come under fire, but later said the airstrikes were requested by Afghan forces under Taliban fire. The bombing killed at least 30 people. The report acknowledged that about 20 patients at that time out of more than 100 were wounded Taliban. But this accorded with the rules of war, it said. Some accounts of events mentioned shooting that appeared to follow the movement of people on the run, the report said. It said the shooting probably came from the plane carrying out the attack. The death toll was earlier set at 22, but the report says at least 30 people were killed, including 10 known patients, 30 known staff and 7 more bodies that were not recognizable. MSF says the coordinates of the hospital were well known and had been communicated again to all sides three days before the bombing. It said that the bombing went on for more than an hour despite repeated calls to U.S. and Afghan military officials in Kabul and Washington to call off these strikes. MSF General Director Christopher Stokes told reporters on Thursday, All the information that we have provided so far shows that a mistake is quite hard to understand and believe at this stage. From what we are seeing now, this action is illegal in the laws of war, he added. Returning the award allowed her to be a part of the political movement started by writers and filmmakers, Ms. Roy said. More than 100 writers and other public figures have out returned awards over what they call rising intolerance in India. It follows a series of recent incidents, including the killings of scholars, writers and rationalists. Bollywood star Shah Rukh Khan has also spoken out against extreme intolerance in India. Ms. Roy was among 24 filmmakers to give back their awards on Thursday. As they did, so Muslims in the northeastern state of Manipur staged a general strike to protest against the lynching of a Muslim man by a Hindu crowd on Monday. They had accused him of trying to steal a cow. It was a third search mob killing within six weeks. An NLD spokesman said it expected to win about 70% of the seats. Party leader Aung San Suu Kyi said, I think you all have the idea of the results. Official results have been released for just 12 seats, all won by NLD. The military-backed Union Solidarity Development Party has been in power since 2011. We are on track to win more than 70% of seats around the country, but the election commission has not officially confirmed yet. NLD spokesman Win Tain told AFP News Agency. The 12 seats announced so far are all in Yangon. The acting chairman of the USDP has told that he has lost his own seat in the constituency of Hinthada to the NLD, seen as a key indicator of election results. We have to find out the reason why we lost, Ute O said. However, we do accept the results without any reservations. We still don't know the final results for sure. Earlier, Ms. Suki addressed a crowd at the NLD's headquarters in Yangon, urging them to be patient. A quarter of the parliamentary seats are reserved for the army, and for the NLD to have the winning majority, it will need at least two-thirds of the contested seats. But Ms. Suki cannot become president because the constitution bars anyone with foreign children from holding the post. Her two sons with her late husband are British. Our correspondent says that if the NLD win, it will face difficulties in changing the constitution of its own as the document still gives the military considerable power and the party would almost likely nominate someone else to be president. Ms. Suki said that she would be above the president. Four were found guilty of beating Samuel Alam Rajan to death after they said he tried to steal a rickshaw. Six other men were jailed. The murder filmed by one attacker on his phone caused widespread outrage.
In the second case, two car mechanics were condemned for the death of a former employee. Rakib Haladar died in August after air was pumped into his body in retaliation for leaving his job. Rajan was attacked in July after a group of men accused him of stealing a bicycle rickshaw van in the northwestern city of Silet. One of the attackers filmed the assault on his mobile phone. The footage showed by the boy being tied to a pole and hit repeatedly with a rod. The video, which was posted on the internet, showed the boy pleading for his life and crying for water and screaming, Please don't beat me like this, I will die. An autopsy found that the 13-year-old had 64 separate injuries. While well, suspected thieves are often attacked by mobs in Bangladesh, the brutality of this particular attack sparked protests, say the BBC's Mahfuz Sadiq. Thousands of people demonstrated in Silhet and other parts of the Bangladesh over the killing. Thirteen men were originally charged in the case, but three were acquitted. Six received sentences of between a year and life. Kamrul Slam, described as the prime suspect, was one of those who received the death penalty. He had fled to Saudi Arabia after the murder, but was arrested less than a week later after the officials were reportedly tipped off by members of the country's large expatriate Bangladeshi community. He was extradited in October. One of the other four men were condemned to death on, is on the run and so was sentenced in absentia. Viewers, now the business news. The figures may help determine whether there will be a U.S. rate rise in December. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen had said earlier in this week that it was still a live possibility that rates would go up this year. In Japan, the benchmark Nikkei index was up 0.42% at 19,198.13. The index was given a boost as the yen weakened against the dollar, which is good for Japan's big exporters as it makes their good cheaper to buy overseas. The dollar was worth 121.74 yen in early Asian trade compared with 121.55 yen a day earlier. Despite the weaker yen, however, Toyota's shares opened lower in Tokyo trade after the firm reported a rise in second quarter profits but trimmed its net annual sales rate target. Elsewhere, Chinese shares were mixed with the Shanghai Composite up 0.4% at 3,539.25, while the Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index was down 0.18% at 22,859.39. Australia's S&P slash ASX 200 was up 0.27% at 5,207.00, while in South Korea, the Kospi Index was down 0.17% at 2,045.69. Anthony Allen and Anthony Conti were changed with conspiracy to commit wire and bank fraud and committing wire fraud by misreporting the London Interbank offered rate as it related to the US dollar. Both worked for Dutch lender Rabobank. The LIBOR scandal blew up in 2012 when it emerged that banks had been lying in the figures of which LIBOR was sent. The LIBOR rate is a key figure in setting global borrowing rates. The U.S. Department of Justice reached a deal at Rabobank in October 2013 for $1 billion to 657 million euro over its role in manipulating LIBOR. This was the first conviction of traders involved in scandal in the U.S. In August, Tom Hayes, a former Tokyo-based trader at USB and Citigroup, was convicted of labor manipulation in London. In a statement, Leslie Caldwell, head of the Justice Department Criminal Division, said, Today's verdicts illustrate the department's successful efforts to hold accountable bank executives responsible for this global fraud scheme. Allen and Conti, along with other traders along the world, lied about how much it cost them to borrow from other banks. During the trial, their attorneys argued that they had done should not be answered administered fraud because the panel collecting the data knew that many bankers lied about the rate. The C919 with 168 seats and range of 3,444 miles was displayed at a ceremony attended by 4,000 guests. The C919's first test flight is not until 2016, but the unveiling was seen as having a huge industrial significance. A great nation must have its own large commercial aircraft, the country's civil aviation chief Li Ziaxiang said. China's air transport industry cannot completely rely on imports, he told the ceremony at a hangar near Shanghai's Pudong International Airport. The BBC's economics correspondent Andrew Walker says the aircraft represents an important step in China's economy moving beyond low-cost manufacturing. The C919's manufacturer Commercial Aircraft Corp of China said it has orders for 517 aircraft from 21 customers, most of them Chinese airlines, but also from leasing company GE Capital Aviation Services. 
The development of the new aircraft has seen hit by delays since the project was conceived in 2008. Assuming the test flights are successful, the C919 is due to another enter commercial service in about 2019. Viewers, now the sports news. In an interview with the BBC sports editor Dan Ron, the Real Madrid forward said he had reached a level from where it is not an easy to improve. The Portuguese 30 is a three-time world footballer of the year and Real's all-time leading goal scorer. He said, I don't need to say I'm in the history of football. I am a legend. The numbers say everything. Ronaldo, who joined Real from Manchester United in 2009 for 80 million euro, said he had reached an unbelievable level on the pitch over the last eight years. He wants to continue playing for another five or six seasons. His career record stands at 504 goals in 760 appearances. To improve more is very tough. I just want to maintain because this is, I think, is the most difficult part for a football player, said Ronaldo. He is also the Champions League top scorer with 82 goals. In my mind, I'm always the best. I don't care what people think, what they say. In my mind, not just this year, but always, I'm always the best, he added. Ronaldo was asked about comparisons with Barcelona and Argentina forward Lionel Messi, a four-time World Player of the Year with 418 goals in 492 club appearances. He said, it's opinions. I respect the opinions. Maybe in your opinion, Messi is better than me, but in my mind, I'm better than him. So it's simple. Ronaldo joined Manchester United from Portuguese side Sporting Lisbon for €12.2 in 2003, scoring 118 goals for the club in 292 appearances. Since moving to Madrid he, while he's under contract until 2018, he has scored 326 goals in 314 matches. Viewers, let's have a look at Millennium TV News recap. U.S. and Israel leaders to hold first post-Iran deal meeting. South China Sea U.S. Defense Chief Ash Carter weds into role. League scheme U.S. high school football player dies. Brazil dam burst engulfs home in Minas Gerais. Sinai plane crash Russia suspends Egypt flights. You are up to date with the top stories so far here on Millennium TV. And don't forget to log into www.millenniumtv.net. Thank you and stay with Millennium TV. Allah Hafiz.